so thereby, yeah. We are live on many destinations today. Hello and welcome to this live show. I am very excited to announce the starting of Career Confab show. This is the first episode that we are going to do. And on this show, we will be featuring some lesser known professions, which are highly lucrative and are going to be extremely of value in the COVID-19 situations and later on in the year 2020 and later on also. So welcome to all of our uh, live audience. And I am so happy to welcome my return guests, Madhuri Shinde and Smita Shinde. Thank you so much for being here. Madhuri is joining from Mumbai and Smita is joining us from Mountain View, California. Uh, sorry, there was a little bit of internet glitch. Don't mind. Uh, it's it's all right. These things happen. Earlier, we had done a very comprehensive three-part series on e-learning and the business models which can be taken advantage of by anybody who wishes to participate in e-learning. And as we know, work from home is going to be something which will stay for a long time now. E-learning is something which all educators, trainers, coaches, and everybody should think about, definitely, if you are not already thinking about it. So we decided to do one episode, in fact, the first episode on the Career Confab show based on instructional designing as a lucrative career option in 2020 and beyond. So Vadri and Smita, you people are absolutely the very best in the profession of learning and development. And you are also e-learning specialists. You are also instructional designers yourself, having a lot of experiential learning in the process of whatever time you people have invested in the field. So I'm extremely happy to welcome you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Nina, and thanks for the audience. Yeah, uh, of course. We are streaming live on many destinations today. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I see. I just want to announce one more thing that uh, in the description of this video, I have linked one uh, landing page, and you, if you want to uh, get in touch with Smita and Madhuri directly, please get in touch with them on LinkedIn or Facebook or any other social media platform that you are. Uh, you are uh, using, uh, there's a bit of glitch. One moment. Okay, anyway, uh, so if you if you uh, want to get in touch with Madhuri and Smita directly, please, you are most welcome to do that. And in the link in the description of this video, You'll find a link. There is there is a landing page. We will be doing some live trainings very shortly. So if you are interested in the field of instructional designing, please sign up there. You don't have to pay anything as of now. And you can just stay there and you can just input your email ID and we'll get in touch with you as soon as we commence our next batch. We've already done this training successfully several times earlier. And now we are taking it on the other level completely. Yeah. So welcome to the show again, all of you, all the live audience and Madhuri and Smita. Uh, yeah. First of all, I'll immediately go into asking you what is instructional designing? See, I've been yeah. in the field also myself, but for the sake of the audience, please tell us very short uh, nuggets of uh, yeah. what instructional design is all about and how can anybody go into the profession? Yeah. Uh, so sure, uh, Nina. Before I give the definition, I'll quickly give uh, the outline what we will try to cover in this session. So we'll cover what is instruction designing, uh, designing briefly. Uh, Smita and I'll uh, cover the definitions. Then we'll talk about who can become an instructional designer and how how they can become it, uh, become an instructional designer. What are the key components of instructional design? Like what are the primary things involved in instructional designing uh, from the skills perspective? 
then we'll talk about uh, why choose instructional design as a profession uh, profession or why can you choose instructional design as a profession uh, and we'll talk about uh, the benefits that are there in it from the work culture perspective plus you know the earning potential and then we'll go deep into some of the examples like you know what all different uh, uh, career paths, I mean, study paths that you have taken and how you can still become an instructional design and what is the potential of earning uh, in job as well as uh, as a freelancer for instructional designer. So right. this is uh, yes. everything. Yeah. So uh, coming to your question, uh, Nina. So if I have to give you a dictionary meaning, uh, instructional design is systematically designing, developing and delivering instructional products okay and they right. can be e-learning or they can be a uh, classroom as well and these days the new thing has not these days it was earlier also there but now it's uh, you know more popular it's virtual ILT like people take sessions virtually so even right. as an instructional designer it's not that a trainer randomly goes and takes a session yeah, a material is also developed and that's called as virtual ILT uh, material mm -hmm. where you like any instructional led training you have an instructor guide participant guide and some activity uh, you know uh, material that you can use virtually so this is a little definition uh, to it uh, smita you would like to add the de to the definition or give some other other version as well sure so uh, uh, madhuri thank you for the dictionary definition and you know i will try to simplify uh, the definition further so instructional designing uh, is, is, is a research-based uh, uh, profession. So there are two areas uh, uh, in instructional design. One is, or there are two components in instructional designing. One is the knowledge or the goal or the skill that the company wants to achieve. And then there is a learner. So what an instructional de uh, designer does is he understands and researches the knowledge and, and skill or the goal. And he then looks at his learners and say, okay, these are my learners. This is what they, this is what, oh, this is the gender. This is the ethnicity. This is the educational level. And then the job of an instructional designer is to build a bridge between these two. So how yeah. does he take those skills and knowledge and bring it to those learners in the yeah. most effective manner? And that is the yeah. instructional yeah. designer. Yeah. 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 So, you know, uh, yes, there are three components for an instructional designer, as Smita said, research and any research, uh, the outcome, uh, the, the task is uh, logical and analytical skills and you do analysis. Okay. Second part is designing. When I say designing, all the analysis that you do from that, you prepare a design, a roadmap of your curriculum. And then you do the development. When I say development, you actually write the content. Um, it can be a storyboard. Which, will, which is again a blueprint for developing an e-learning. That storyboard can be uh, uh, in any tool. It can be Word or it can be PowerPoint. And then, you know, uh, or if you are developing a, a ILT, then it can be a direct content instructions that you're giving to uh, the instructor and the participant guides, which the participants refer. So this is, this is these are the deliverables, just an extension of Smita said. Uh, okay. Now, you know, Nina, yeah, right. anything, Nina, you want to add? No, no, add no something? nothing, please, okay. please. Yes. Now, uh, now the next question probably people will have is, uh, who can become an instructional designer? Absolutely. To give you a simple answer, anyone. Okay. It's actually anyone can become an instructional designer. Now, when I say anyone, um, hmm. I think we lost Smita. When I say anyone, uh, yes, anyone can become, anyone with any educational background can become, provided they have certain skills. And the primary skill that is needed is writing skills. But yes. apart from that, there are some other things that the person needs to have. Uh, because as we covered, uh, there is some analytical skills, logical skills they need to have inherent. And if they know, uh, if they have some education, uh, I mean, educational experience, when I say educational experience is related to teaching or related to, you know, giving instructions, that is always, that makes them a good um, instructional designer. And I like to use, you know, one word, which probably some people like it, some people don't like it. You also need to have common sense to put the logic <laughs> in instructional design. So that's I mean, you know. That's so very important. <laughs> yeah, so very because, you know, it's you need to 
you need to think from a teacher's point of view how i can and i i always say this like if you have sat in a class in mm. a traditional class classroom mm. and have never got bored of the traditional form of teaching then you have never thought how what instructional design can do so there should be a point where you must have got really bored and thought i don't want to learn like this if i was a teacher i would have taught in a different way in a different manner yeah or different different manner because that is a starting point like what is it that will not bore me so th this kind of thing now this was a very random and ambiguous statement that i made but when you have to adapt it as a culture uh, as as a profession you have to cultivate that habit cultivate that as a skill having said that uh, again who can become an instructional designer the, the the there are certain educational backgrounds that are given preferences definitely so people having ma english literature they are giving they are given pre uh, preferences people who come from journalism background they are given preferences and this was way long back that you know they were completely focusing on people who had writing skills but now since you know the sphere of training and the awareness in the training industry has really broadened they also get specialized people like let's say somebody is an engineer and that person doesn't want to uh, do coding but still wants to apply his uh, Uh, knowledge that he has gained into engineering college what will he do let's see he has fairly good amount of writing skills and a good analytical and uh, research oriented things so that person has a good scope in joining any software company or technical uh, company and become an instructional uh, uh, instructional designer because mm -hmm. i in in my career also i had many co many colleagues who have been instructional designers same goes with medical professionals like there have been lot of uh, allied medical professionals uh, who have medical knowledge but maybe they don't want to practice they have come into instructional design they are heavily involved in some companies who are specifically doing medical courses so this is a, a kind of thing that i wanted to give over yes. i'll hand it over to smita to add more to this that's that's very important actually i was uh, you must have noticed i was a little distracted because there's something wrong tonight and uh, our live stream on facebook is not working uh, very well so i was okay. just trying to adjust that so but these things happen technology is extremely good so that we can uh, sit and talk halfway across the world and to the people uh, i have some people joining from nigeria and i have some people joining from boston so you know it's a mix of audience that we have tonight and that's really wonderful although something has gone wrong and my, our facebook streaming is not happening i'll check it out later so that's what uh, kept me a little distracted but i was right there with you because multitasking is one thing which you automatically learn while working from home and i've been working from home all my life so uh, working from home in these covid-19 situations is not really uh, a, a different thing for me or something unusual but it is going to be the usual parameter in the times to come we all know that by now if even if we don't know many many things as to how life is going to proceed further we are very sure about this one thing that work from home is going to be a new normal culture so yeah. in that context uh, smita i want you to take it a little forward and tell us what are the work from home opportunities available for instructional designers and other people who may be interested yeah. in working in allied fields of instructional yeah. design yeah uh, sure thanks nina so uh, coming back to what madhuri said yes instructional designing profession is for everyone okay and the best part about this this particular profession was it was started for work from home uh, yeah, okay people so, <laughs> so can, you, can you come a little closer to your mic because i'm uh, feeling uh, yes voice is a little low yeah can you hear me now yes it is better much better now <laughs> yeah so uh, like i said uh, and uh, i would like to reiterate what madhuri said the profession is for everyone and the best part about this profession is that it was started for people who want to work from home okay. so <laughs> so going back uh, going back in history the the profession actually started uh, 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 
in the, in uh, you know in the west uh, for women who are actually working from home okay who can who can go back to job uh, but uh, because of multiple reasons either they are married their kids are small or you know they had to take care of their family so this profession was actually started uh, to extend the workforce and and you know to to make sure that these people uh, uh, you know build courses get their teaching uh, experience and build courses however later it did not remain uh, like a allied or a part time or a work from home profession it became a full grown uh, um, a profession looking at the uh, uh the way profession was going the way people were passionate and uh, the way industry was growing and how uh, it, it took shape uh, so then you know a lot of people started making it as a uh, full time profession to to answer to your question yes this is a profession which was actually started as a work from home option now coming back to how it's going to shape in future and like madhuri said whether you are from from engineering or medical or you're fresh graduate or you you are a drama and theater student you are a, a, a biotechnology technology student you are a bsc msc uh, you are 40 year old you are 30 year old or you are you are fresh out of college which is 21 year old or you are in your final year degree and are looking for uh, and you're exceptional you know with your research skills with your analytics analytical skills and you're looking for for a part time uh, job while you're working i think this is the profession for you uh, uh, so Mm -hmm. so uh, there are uh, uh, and one of the best things about this profession is uh, uh, that you know you can uh, you the, the profession the 80% of the time you have the ability to uh, work from home as long as you are super good with coordination and you you can coordinate with people you you are super good with uh, online tools and all that so yes this is uh, the way to go and uh, to add to your um, uh, question uh, that as to how this particular profession is taking up and how what are the options for 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 uh, work from home so the covid-19 situation uh, has changed how people are working i mean i have seen companies uh, that are actually shutting down their operations and completely going uh, remote workforce because yeah. they see how effectively people are working one of the profession that is in boom in this situation so while it has affected a lot of profession but one of the profession that is in boom is instructional designing profession because yeah. it calls for a lot of need to actually train people on you know how to keep them sa safe how to change the work uh, you know the working habits how to actually get to, to to work from home and this has become a very very critical and you know there's so much of demand during this time yeah. for, for this profession the yeah. working the earning potential is great and you know we will take that up uh, a little yeah. later but yeah to answer your question Yeah. fantastic fantastic so it's a great opportunity and uh, i also have to announce at this moment that uh, uh, i'm preparing a course completely uh, free of uh, any charges which is uh, totally targeted to train people as to what work from home really is all about the practical implications the dedication levels that you need and everything else surrounding uh, the work from home culture is going to be covered on this uh, free course which we will be launching in yeah. another week's time yes please continue uh, so now you know uh, kita you want to say something no, no. Say? go ahead yeah. go ahead <laughs> so now that you know we have talked about uh, what are the work from home benefits and how it's going to change post covid uh, i would just like to highlight something that what exactly is included in instruction design Like yes. I told that you know that the primary skill that is needed is writing skills. You need to be good writing with your grammar. Skills. You need to yes. be you know good in your comprehension of text. Uh, there is there was something which we all learned in our uh, high school. It's called as pressy writing. Yes, you know, that is something yes. which I think you know is very very important in instructional designing because you read a content and then write it rewrite it in a precise way. Uh, because that is one thing which you know works very well in e-learning then there is something like which i spoke uh, last time as well in our session that uh, uh, writing for different cognition level so these this is 
a little higher going at a little higher level of writing but yes all kinds of writing the more uh, the better the person is in writing skills the chances of getting into the entry level instructional design becomes good but these I, days I guess, in, sorry to interrupt here madri i guess the first uh, interview involves some kind of a writing uh, test yes. for most yes. instructional for, designers yes yes the freshers like people who are just entering the profession uh, they mm. usually do writing test it has a uh, grammar objective grammar then it has essay writing it has comprehension so it depends from company to company some company gives very elaborate but definitely there is uh, uh, grammar skills there is essay there is comprehension something uh, uh, in pressy then there are uh, writings like you know writing for visually challenged people writing a procedure see there was one thing like you know uh, they can also have test like you want to make an omelet write the procedure write the steps for it or procedure for it so you know those steps you write like the way you write in a cookery book because that again is instruction design you know that's yes. not instruction design that's writing instructions so basically you are tested on your writing skills when it, at an entry level but what happens is nowadays a lot of people are aware of e learning and lot of people apply for e learning so even though just writing skill is in a it's always better to test yourself beforehand and see whether you are made for that profession or or, or uh, not and go equipped with some of the basics about instructional design and that's why you know uh, uh, one should get uh, either they should you know learn it from a mentor Uh, some of the skills, or they should take some certification courses. There are a lot of uh, certification courses available online. In India, we don't have a systematic study on instructional design as such are available. But the only thing, the difference between a certification course and a mentor is certification courses. Many of the times, or you can say the online courses cover the concepts, cover the theories, the models, but at an application level. Uh, the the knowledge is less when you, and yes. and with a mentor the mentor can actually tell you the practicalities and how, what kind of situations are there and how we can apply it, challenges so it can give you more practical perspective so that is the difference right and experiential yes. learning is very important in this field yes uh, the It's, more yeah. uh, you learn from an experienced person the better it is going to uh, be for you to finally implement that knowledge when you are actually working on a project exactly that's, exactly. that's important and that's the biggest point to note over here just going after a certification course and i'm going on record saying this that just going after a certification course is not going to take you further down the path in uh, the field of instructional designing because it is a challenging field every course you develop every training module you develop is going to be different and that comes from the learning from a mentor and these two people we have here uh, okay. are the best mentors in the world because they have years and years of experiential learning on the field as instructional designers and they are also willing to share that knowledge the second yeah. part is extremely important because a lot of people are having the knowledge but if they are unwilling to share the knowledge then it's of no use to the freshers or the new people who come into the field so you can get directly in touch with madhuri and smita and you can also link uh, put your put your details on the link uh, and then when we start a new batch we can contact you all right yes yeah. coming to the mentorship in this yeah. profession please so i will i will let mentorship uh, smita talk about mentorship but i will just before that cover a little bit thing on uh, instructional design now what exactly are the components of instructional design at a high level we talked about writing skill the second thing is it's a scientific approach when i i gave a very ambiguous statement at the start of my this that we should get bored and this and that but it all boils down to um, how you make that statement systematic to arrive at a solution you have to follow systematic steps and when a systematic step comes a scientific approach comes so yes. instruction design is a blend of scientific approach writing skills and creativity and you should be able to visualize also now yeah. in scientific approach one component is uh, educational psychology 
So there are a lot of theories, like you, we say learning theories, learning models, learning strategies that are derived, which we apply. The challenge, like when I was talking about mentorship and uh, uh, certificate, you will, and even internet, you will get a lot of information about a lot of theories, a lot of models, a lot of strategies. The challenge that many people have is how to apply it. Yes. Application. How to So you yes. ask somebody, they'll give you, you know, uh, loads and loads of information about component display theory, Bloom's taxonomy. They'll talk about ADDI model, ARCS model. I have seen people loaded with knowledge. I mean, yeah. I don't know that much, <laughs> to be frank. But, you know, but the point you is... You may not know the theories that much. That's okay. Yeah. But when it comes to application, give them a storyboard and that is the test. You know, write a storyboard or right. do a design document. So that is where, uh, you know, the application part is more important rather than knowing the theory part. Yes. I'll so all this anecdote over here, Madhuri, if you don't mind my sharing it, I come from the advertising background. Oh, yeah. And it was all on the job learning for me, although I had done one certification course. But when I went on to the job, it was like everything was new, just, just like what we are discussing now. Uh, the theory uh, and the practical, the gap between uh, the two, you know. So yeah. uh, recently, very recently, uh, an, uh, an accomplished in, in instructional designer who's been working in the field for last 10 years, reached out to me to learn storyboarding. Yeah. All right. So this is, this is the very important key aspect. And I, I sat down with the person and actually taught storyboarding from my advertising angle, you know, yeah. I'm not an instructional designer by any uh, chance, but I do create my own training modules, but that's okay. That's like a very small part. I run a very small company. The, the fact of the matter is I had immense advertising knowledge, which applied to uh, the storyboarding principles and uh, I mean, teaching to yeah. a person who is actually working in the field of instructional design yeah. was a learning uh, experience in itself for me so that's how I, I get a get an idea of what you are trying to say that uh, getting onto a some, somebody uh, some, I'm la latching onto somebody I would say latching onto somebody because if you have a mentor or if you, if there is anybody who is uh, ready to teach you you should actually get down to yeah. catching the person and really extracting all the knowledge from them yeah, you know, yeah. that's what i feel is yeah. all, all is mentorship all about so yeah i, I understand what you are uh, you're saying a lot and, of people i'm, I'm watching they are putting their email ids into the comment section please uh, the comments will be visible to uh, everybody later on also when the video gets recorded on youtube and other places so please put your email id on the link which is given in the description Right. If you don't want your email IDs to be just publicized to the whole wide world, I mean, that's just a suggestion. All right. Please proceed. Plus, you know, the content creation part requires a lot of discipline. We think, OK, we have to just be creative and write something. It requires a lot of discipline uh, in terms of several things, in terms of Maybe your voice is fading a little bit. Can you can you speak? Yeah. Uh, so I'm saying those? content creation requires uh, content creation work requires a lot of discipline and a lot of uh, uh, what do you say? Precise. Uh, you have to be very precise in a lot of things that you write, uh, from language perspective, from creativity perspective, from the uh, content flow perspective, and that o that comes only with a lot of practice. And when somebody there are reviewers who review your work, they give you changes because Smitha and I have learned all by our practice. Like you no, know, we also got we had to latch onto a mentor in the office. Tell them, you know, I remember when I had joined my career, uh, I somehow had got missed out of the in-house training and we had fabulous training. And I got to know that they are giving uh, the first hand experience, like even before knowing what is instructional design to write a storyboard. So I was missed in that. I was by mistake missed in that session. So I got to know that, you know, one of the topic was filmmaking. So with whatever little knowledge I had, whatever knowledge I had, I did some research online and I prepared a storyboard uh, in PowerPoint on filmmaking. And I practically emailed it to everybody, all the seniors in the office. 
all the managers in the office asking yeah. them hey, please i am a new joining and please correct it and give me your feedback hmm. you know so so this kind of proactive approach helps and i was fortunate enough to meet some really good people in my career who helped me you know in the early stage uh, having said this i think you know i'll give it to smita to talk more about mentorship because she has been a trainer and mentor for a longer duration that i have been i have been more on the ground uh, doing working in e learning production houses and uh, other companies so i'll give it to uh, smita Yes. Uh, sure. Before before that, Smita, uh, we are getting a question from uh, somebody in the live audience. Uh, the person is uh, going by the name Brevity, saying, "Is certification compulsory?" I think we have already answered that. But quickly, can you just uh, answer it again? Maybe the person has joined late. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, thanks uh, for the question and thanks for joining the uh, the live session. So, uh, is certification compulsory? Uh, well. Um, uh no <laughs> or yes <laughs> so if the answer is uh, no my my first answer is no and the next answer is yes maybe okay so uh if to get into the profession you definitely don't need to have a certification uh, uh like i said um you can uh, work with a mentor uh you can uh, you can you can work on your own uh but yeah, the straightforward answer is yes it's not <clears throat> it's not mandatory to actually get certification uh, uh for me uh, certification uh, helps or I, I i i try to do a lot of research on certification meet a lot of people uh, this the entire certification process and if you're going into a class what really helps is you get exposed to a lot of ideas around fresh ideas around you get to learn what something new but so if you have spent some time in the in in the profession you're doing good and you just want to take take it a little more you know ahead uh, or or have that uh, certification on your resume to bag good jobs um, uh, if you don't have a lot of experience on your on on your side then i think certification will help but to get into the profession the straightforward answer is no certification does not help because uh in most of the times uh, what i have seen is when you want to get into the profession the first thing that they do is ask you to write an exam test you on whether you do have that inbuilt instructional designing quality and uh, that's how you manage to get some of the good jobs okay uh so uh, talking about the mentorship and uh, uh uh, I, I have heard a lot of good things from you, from Madhuri, and um, uh, mentorship is not just you, not, not just applicable in 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 my profession, in instructional design profession. Uh, it is everywhere. So, yes. so let's say, yeah. So uh, so let's say you have learned uh, a lot of theories, uh, uh, or let's say you have gone to a medical college. And you have learned a lot of theories. You still have to do some internship with a mentor before you actually call yourself as a surgeon, Absolutely. because uh, the the theories that you have learned, you have to know how practically um, is applied in real life. Now, yes. what's going to happen is if you're going to take some some online course, if you're going to read about this, there's there's a lot of information uh, online on instructional designing. There are a lot of books on instructional designing. However, I would still promote a mentor is because let's say if I have learned five principles or five theories, okay, be it ADD, IE, or SAM, or Robert Gagne. Yeah. I know these theories by heart, but one of the challenges you need to hook on to somebody who has run about hundred courses from, you know, uh, and has an experience uh, uh, who will tell you that hey, you know what, in this particular course, uh, maybe uh, Kathy Moore would not work, okay, or yeah. or the game designing would not work. Why it would not work? Because let's yeah. look at your learners, okay, and that's yeah. where a mentor will help you. A yeah. second thing, most of the mentors, and if you if you hook on to a good mentor, most of the mentors would do is, you know, instead of giving you a lot of knowledge, they will direct you to where they can get those theory knowledge, okay? And they will give you practical courses to say, hey, now that you have learned Robert Gagne, uh, let's look at this course that I am yeah. working on right now. Can you assist me on this course that we're working right now? And what we're going to do is we're going to apply that principle in in that particular course and i think that's where the mentor uh, uh, mentor really helps okay 
Uh, now, how long uh, you stick with a mentor? So I have, I, I, I remember uh, I used to do a lot of uh, courses and, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, in-class uh, trainings. So one of the companies that I have actually uh, trained was Cognizant and um, uh, I, and these were like for healthcare professionals and this was for many locations for Cognizant. And um, uh, uh, one of the challenge I was thrown uh, for this particular session was these guys were either, uh, these guys were all healthcare professionals. So they were either BHMS, uh, BM, uh, you know, I mean, whatever that. Uh, and they were actually um, working in uh, 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 working uh, in healthcare profession, and their job was actually to train people, okay, yeah. on the medical procedures. Uh, and so they were not uh, uh, they were not really really instructional designers. But one of the prime job they had to do was uh, was to actually train and design courses. So I w and they also. Uh, 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 bought an uh, authoring tool and I wanted to make a connection as to how this thing, how how the knowledge will be applied into the specific authoring tool that they were using. Uh, right. So when I actually uh, went there. So they were SMEs. They knew what they were talking about. Or what they yeah. had to learn was how do we actually uh, make it more uh, um, more instructional, uh, or make it more good instructional. Yeah. So yeah. I started from doing a lot of storytelling and saying, okay, fine, you know, show me your case that you want to build. Uh, and when they showed me the case, I said, okay, fine, you know, now that you have to want to build a story, how will you build a story? And in a typical uh, session that I take, you know, even if I take a five-day session, uh, I offer a six-month uh, mentorship with them. So even if you go uh, uh, in the session, either it's virtual session or in-class session, you talk about applicability, and then you just don't drop it there. You, you, I, I generally offer a three or six months mentorship where you know I open up an email uh, uh, address for them, or you know, uh, uh, twice in a week I open a live, uh, you know, open a chat session for them, and whatever questions that they have gathered. Uh, to up, uh, you know, while in job, to, uh, and you know, the issues that have faced in their job, they can actually uh, hook on to the mentor and ask this question, and I can provide them an answer. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. And uh, we have a question coming in. Uh, I'll just show it on the screen, and this is uh, from Yinka, Yinka Maja, and uh, she's saying, "What are the necessary tools for instructional design?" Okay. So it. You want to take it with her? Yeah, okay. you can add uh, if I miss out something. So it entirely yeah. depends on you know what type of instructional designer you want to be. Okay, so earlier, uh, uh, so either you want to be a Madri-like instructional designer or you want to be a Smita-like instructional designer. <laughs> so, so, uh, so that's a very really good one actually. You know, because a personal style is very necessary in this particular profession. Yeah, because you know, uh, Nida, just let me add uh, to this. You know, some some things. Uh, like you know, yes, both of us like stories, but uh, Smita is practically in love with gamification, and I am practically love uh, in love with storytelling. So that's how you know. So let's say tomorrow we decide now. Now when we are working, we do a lot of other, a lot of different kinds of projects. But let's say tomorrow we decide that hey, you know, now we want to stick with our dish. I would stick with a storytelling kind of uh, instructional design, and she will stick with a, ga a gamification kind of instructional design, where she's blending the stories. But so, so that's why she's saying Madhuri like or Pita like, you know, because we yes. all have but our very, very important you know, point, which is a personal style blend is very necessary. That's yes. that's one of uh, see. Uh, I look at it from the personal branding angle also, because for me, uh, being a solo pruner is very important. And yeah. uh, anything that you do uh, ultimately uh, boils down to the personal brand that you're building. So it's yeah. it's all about projecting yourself in yeah. the creative work that you're doing. Yeah. And uh, uh, so maybe if you're working on a big uh, assignment from uh, some big corporate house, then it's a different thing altogether that you yeah. have to follow certain guidelines. Compliances and all that. Yes. So, uh, so I guess you know we should not uh, uh, dishonor the question uh, so yeah. let me answer that question first. Yes. Please. So uh, my Smita and Madhuri style was, of course, for the personal uh, 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 style, and it also added to something else. So five years and six years, uh, 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 or or I, I would rather say uh, in 
like in 2010, 11, 12, these years, uh, it was not mandated for instructional designers to actually start working on authoring tools. They, they were not, there were multiple people in instructional designing. So there were graphic designers, there were developers who, who typically do flash development or HTML development, and there, there yeah. were instructional designers, and there were copywriters and, 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 and technical writers. Uh, however, uh, with time, what has happened is um, uh, uh, things have changed. Uh, there is uh, there is a lot of responsibility that uh, an instructional designer shoulders uh, purely because um, uh, 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 in the industry, uh, let's say if you're working in a software company and your job is to actually build a training for that particular software. Now, with with an agile methodology, with with a, a rapid prototyping and you know quick uh, release cycles. So, if your release cycle is like fifteen days, which means I have to make modification in my courses every fifteen days, and you know to to run through a traditional uh, instructional design cycle is very very uh, tough. Where you say, okay, now run to the graphic designer, now run to the uh, developer, make these small changes. And uh, even in our profession, there is so much of uh, development in rapid authoring tools. There are so many who are coming, which has enabled the instructional designers to actually uh, build the courses okay, uh, with inbuilt graphics, inbuilt uh, um, uh, 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 small animations. Uh, uh, you can do a little bit of edits. So again, uh, like I said, you know, earlier, uh, while writing is uh, a core focus, writing, research, analysis are the core focus. So when we have to talk about tools, uh, the tools that you should be really good at is Word, okay? Uh, PowerPoint and power and Word PowerPoint, uh, I would, you should be really, really at an advanced level on Word and PowerPoint. Yeah. You should, uh, uh, which does not mean uh, that, you know, you if you can open PowerPoint and anybody can type a text, but you should be able to identify that you know whether I am I'm, I'm missing out. Uh, I have to focus on alignment, storyboarding, writing instruction. I should be able to even create small clip arts in PowerPoint, draw stuff. So on off an advanced level, you need to know really really well uh, of color theories. So you should be great at using uh, uh, Adobe Cooler and you know other uh, places where you can mix and match and make colors. Okay. Uh, now, one of uh, the uh, recent trends that I have seen uh, uh, in companies on hiring is that they want instructional designers who uh, who have a know-how of uh, graphics. So they may not they may not uh, sit and uh, uh, do uh, graphics. So I picked up graphics. I am a I, I, I can do illustration. I can do animation. I can do uh, um, uh, Photoshop. I have a little bit of knowledge of HTML. Uh, but on job, uh, uh, they expect you to know a little bit of, you know, what graphics is so that, you know, as an instructional designer, you know that, you know, what um, uh, what kind of graphics I should use to make sure that uh, my, my course will run seamlessly. You have to even study uh, the customer's learning management system and find out whether yeah. I want to make a graphical rich uh, course, uh, how long the course should take. Whether if the person is on mobile phone, you should know what a responsive uh, uh, design uh, course. So a little bit of technical knowledge. And you know, uh, to be very honest, you don't really have to go to school. If you sit with a mentor, the mentor will tell you what it is. So a little bit of knowledge of, of these technical elements, like what are the graphic elements that go in, what is illustrated what is the difference between vector and raster uh, graphics what kind of animation tools are there you may not necessarily know these tools but a know-how of that yes. uh, second thing uh, that has is really started coming is a lot of instructional designers these days now create courses themselves so which was what I was talking about cognizant so they do use uh, auth so uh, they do use authoring tools themselves uh, so uh, uh, and create courses, especially if your uh, company is using or if you are doing uh, a rapid development, the courses, the, the authoring tools are really uh, uh, good. So pick your favorite, okay? Uh, to start with, okay, you can pick up any uh, authoring tool, uh, which is more like a PowerPoint plugin. So for example, your iSpring is a PowerPoint plugin. Even uh, Articulate Studio. Yeah, yeah. You have Articulate Studio that has a PowerPoint plugin, or you even have Lectora, which has which has a, a PowerPoint version. So anything, that, uh, and even for that matter, if you're creating videos, I have created uh, videos, animated videos in PowerPoint. You should just know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even I have done that. Even I have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so textbook products are also in use, I think. Yes. So you have to uh, learn uh, any. Uh, uh, okay. Start with any tool that is a PowerPoint plugin, and then you can pick up your authoring tools. So there are multiple authoring tools. Some of the popular, there are three popular authoring tools available in the market right now, uh, other than the PowerPoint plugins, which is Articulate Storyline, uh, Captivate, and Lectora. So if if you are not a really really techy person, uh, and if you are, if you really want to uh, uh, want to get on it very quickly. Uh, uh, which does not mean you don't have to understand uh, uh, how the triggers and JavaScript work, but but one of the most easiest tool is Articulate Storyline. Okay, compared to other three, just so Captivate is. Of course, I am a Captivate uh, certified uh, professional, but and I teach Storyline, I teach Captivate, I teach Lectora to a wider audience, and I have seen that you know to go to a story, a Captivate or a Lectora, you need to have a little bit of technical inclination, but it is easier for people to actually get on Storyline. So, you know, be good with your writing, uh, know your uh, MS Word, uh, or PowerPoint, or if you are using Google Slides, those tools, uh, uh, have a little bit of knowledge about um, the, the technical it. graphic elements. And lastly, pick up at least one tool. So even yeah. if you put on your resume, hey, I know Storyline, okay? Yeah. I think uh, it is. Yes, that's 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 very important to emphasize. Yeah, I, I think you know. Yeah, guys, what answer? She's saying thank you. You must have seen it on the screen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you You're don't need something. to learn. You don't need to learn every tool, like as Mika mm -hmm. said, but master one tool. Now, at given point of time, you know, all of us, you know, because if you have to remain in the profession, you have to upgrade. Like uh, as you as you go higher in the career, you have to give solutions. You need to know how a particular course, as Smita said, you need to have know-how of learning management systems. You need to have know-how of technical things. So I think Smita has covered it very elaborately. And these days, like most of the instructional designers, you know, like we have to work on the tools. Um, and like I had worked, at, like when a storyline was not there, I was working on Articulate Studio and I had created some simulation, but that was long back as to create simulations in Captivate. Uh, so I think, you know, that is how the trend is going. It's not just restricted to writing. You have to be a writer, a creative person who can visualize content, plus a good sense, even if you can't do illustration, but a good sense of graphics and the technical part. So these are the three things, you know, how you can rise. But but you can start with a smaller part first, the storyboarding, and then go one by one higher. Yes. As I look at it, uh, storyboarding is the basic foundation upon which you start building piece by piece and somewhere along the picture your graphic designer uh, team will come into uh, play and yeah. then if you have a good understanding of where you are going with your uh, storyboard then you will be in a better position to instruct your gds also along the way yeah. and the animation yeah. people and other people you know so so that the yeah. uh, course that comes out is a really good looking course right which yes. can engage yeah. people properly right yes and one uh, small note, I know we're running out of time, but one small note, if you really want to be a freelancer and you want to bag like a lot of projects, okay? So I was a completely non-technical person, but I I learned illustration in two days, to be very honest. It's just Saturday, <laughs> Sunday. So, <laughs> so if you, uh, and one of the things I have noticed is uh, uh, the reason as a free, I mean, I have worked as a freelancer, as a consultant. One of the reasons why I kept getting a lot of projects is because I can do, I could do everything as a single person. So I could do storyboarding. Yes. Yeah. I could do, I could, I, I could write instructional designing, do storyboarding, uh, uh, do graphics, uh, uh, work on authoring tools, and even help them troubleshoot on learning management system. Yeah. So uh, of course, uh, a lot of times companies to run to me when when they had very less time or some agency had goofed up. But uh, if you are one person, if you really want to take this profession seriously, trust me, guys, it does not take really long. Okay, be with a good mentor, and it it's pretty quick. The mentor will tell you, hey, you know what? Why didn't you take do yeah. this? Why didn't you do that? So uh, if you know, if you have knowledge of all the areas, okay, I think. Uh, uh, if you want to do as an independent consultant, you are really in demand. Uh, people are in awe when you tell them, hey, I can do graphics, I can do development, I can, and it's not rocket science, trust me. And, and you know, you know, Smita, I have found that this is not all that difficult. 
if you uh, really wish to create a really good looking course with which is content rich plus it is engaging in the visual quality of it visual appeal of it then you can learn all of these tools and most of the tutorials are actually available for free uh, which teach you uh, pretty nicely on uh, understanding the tools as far as what gets happens. challenging nina is uh, not the tools but the troubleshooting i remember yeah. like you know uh, asmita has done a lot of troubleshooting on uh, storyline i used to do a lot of uh, troubleshooting on articulate studio which is a basic version uh, than storyline so troubleshooting is something which comes with experience and in depth thing oh, yeah. like there are so many things which will not work yeah. and these are tips and tricks and that comes with experience so you know uh, that is something which you know uh, people will uh, come to know once they use the tool again and again but having said all all that one should not get intimidated by thinking if somebody is not very technical and writing is their forte they should not get intimidated like hey you know i can't become an instructional designer no you can focus only on the primary thing like hey you know i can do storyboards i can write phenomenally well i am creative give me a text and i can visualize is uh, very well into how an animation should be or how it can be taught in a simplified way even that will give you enough work and you know uh, a job if you want uh, nina i think we are running out of the time i'll just take 2 minutes and quickly cover about the earning potential because that you wanted yes. to cover yes, that's very important yeah. the earning potential of uh, we are calling it a lucrative career so let's understand what the uh, what what that element is all about yes so if i have to talk about instructional designer instructional design uh, in in terms of heavy words it's a scale it's it's it is good lucrative because of its scalability and sustainability okay when i use these words what i mean is scalability and sustainability is in two forms one is the work culture what that is we already covered you can work in a brick and mortar office or you can work uh, do work from home you can take it as a part time opportunity let's say you are a filmmaker and you want an additional source of income you can become an instructional designer because it's a very closely allied profession to be frank the logic and the concept is same so i know a lot of uh, people like some of my uh, ex colleagues were there who were who were practicing film making and waiting for their break but they were uh, instructional designers so that is the potential of work culture so that's why i said scalability and sustainability and second thing is monetary part so when i have when you say earning the earning potential is immense okay even if you are in a job as a starting salary also you are taken into a decently good salary like any engineer uh whatever the starting salary of an engineer is there that salary you can get as a starting professional and then as you go higher in the career you can even get a handsome six figure salary so that is you know uh, i mean if i have to give you in numbers uh for uh, for for a job and if you do a freelancing work again the potential is how much work you can do and what level of work can work you can do because instruction uh, freelancing again i don't have to say it again and again it's your personal branding how yes. what kind of credibility you develop what kind of work you give to your client so that they become your repeat client again i know some of the freelancers and contractual workers who actually make and even uh, smita and i have worked uh, as freelancers plus as independent contractors uh, in our life uh, so the potential is immense you can even earn a handsome proper salary even a six figure salary working as a freelancer people are paying their bills their home loans working as a freelancer a full fledged yes. profession i i know people who sit on the beach and do instructional designing so if that kind of thing <laughs> excites you and the beach and the waves don't distract you from your work then i think you know uh, you have and that that's the beauty of this work that's, i guess that, that's me that's me you are talking about <laughs> with a lot of music playing in the background maybe a film running somewhere and i am just sitting and doing my work so that's that's uh, exactly my description yes yeah. so whether so, you want to add something more to it yes so when you work as a freelancer uh, so there are multiple ways how you could actually work you can either take a full time job okay or you can become a full time freelancer but one thing uh, that i i must tell you as a free if you really want to be a very good freelancer you should be really really good with your work Yeah. Uh, uh and that applies to freelancing is a very very tough nut to crack i've been working as a freelancer i've had got teams developed 
uh, who are dedicated freelancers working uh, with me on several projects. And freelancing is a uh, difficult not to crack because you have to be delivering your best all the time, all the Correct. time. There is there is no slip up. Correct. There is no slip up absolutely, uh, which is tolerated in this field. Correct. Or and there is there is a third option which is working uh, uh, working on contracts uh, for companies. So let's say if there are a couple of e-learning companies, you could hook on to them, and instead of going out and 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 doing freelancing again and again, you can hook on to some of the uh, some of the companies. Uh, they will ask you for your work in the past. They'll give you a project, and uh, you can sit anywhere and and work for either one or multiple companies uh, on your yeah. own. Uh, so, so that's another way. Now, like I said, uh, the earning uh, capacity is is really good. So, if you are a good uh, freelancer, also, uh, even even on job, you uh, uh, like as a freelancer, I think I have made more money um, uh, than my my salary. Okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks for saying it out loud. Absolutely. <laughs> that's yes. Great. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you because uh, in salary you know uh, that you know uh, you, you have to work on a specific project you have to go but as a freelancer you are continuously working on project you are paid on hourly basis um, and uh, based on you know what uh, your um, uh, capacity is in the US uh, if you are an experienced uh, freelancer you even get paid say like hundred hundred and twenty dollar per hour. On a yes, good yeah. range, but I I'm not committing that to um uh, to all the uh, users here that they they may not get that kind of money right in the beginning, but what I would suggest is if you're just starting off in the career, uh, look for, for look for people who are going to trust you with the job, and once you have uh, enough samples on your uh, 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 samples in your hand it's easier for you to get more jobs okay yes. so so have more ha, because the first thing when you go asking for job is they'll ask you okay show me your work and you have to be very sensitive about nda and and all of that and some and stealing yeah. somebody else's work you can't steal somebody else's work yeah. and show because you will get caught when you will start working yeah. Yeah. so it's better to collect some samples uh, on different different areas and you, then you can show hey you know what this is my storyboard sample how i I had started working was you know uh, I would because I, I most of my samples were NDA tied I would tell them that hey you know what you do you have something okay give me three days and I will I will quickly make a sample yes. okay yes but you have to be very very you can do it in advance also you can just create some mock training programs with yeah. all the things available uh, online yeah. these days and uh, you know most of them are available yeah. for free I think it would be a good idea to just build some sample uh, tutorials of your own and then uh, take it uh, to the person uh, you yeah. want to interview with and show yeah. it as a that this, and, tell, tell them that these are my samples and yeah, I can and, and make them better. Yeah, and if you're working with a mentor, okay, uh, uh, tell, uh, be very, very honest with the mentor as to wh why are you doing this. So if your objective is to start getting work and start building samples, yeah. Let your mentor know that, and your mentor will help you. You know, by the time you're ready to go out in the industry, your mentor will help you build your portfolio. So it's like yes, you, know, yeah. you have to have your portfolio. Yes, and, and yeah, that's one of the advantage of having a mentor. Oh, absolutely. We have a question coming in uh, from Tanuja Mabin. She says, "Can you specify the mentor?" Uh, well, uh, Tanuja, I will answer uh, this question. There is a link in the description. You can. Put your details there. We have live trainings. And the next batch, when it commences, we can contact you. And if you're interested, you can join in the live training. And uh, you can reach out to Madhuri. And you can reach out to uh, Smita. And if you want, you can go in direct coaching with them also. So these are the two people whom I know who are very uh, good in this field of instructional designing and are also willing like I said earlier, to share all the knowledge that they have. It is one thing to be very good in the profession, and it is quite another to actually be able to share it willingly. So a mentor is a person who really can do both, who, who is sitting on a lot of knowledge and is also willing to share it with you. That's that's the that's an ideal mentor. So you can reach out to them also, and you can fill out that form. And uh, next time when we have a live training scheduled, which we will have shortly, 
then uh, we can reach out to you and you can join in the training okay so tanuja is saying thank you so that means she has got the answer and uh, now we are at the top of the hour so uh, thank you very much madhuri thank you very much uh, smita and uh, we'll just close this first very fabulous uh, episode on the career con confab show that we have started and we'll continue discussing the other lesser known lucrative career options in the times to come so keep uh, a watch on this and please uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the content so that whenever we go live next time you get a notification thank you very much everyone for joining us live and thank you madhuri thank you smita have a very lovely weekend thank you. and, and uh, we'll we'll catch up with you guys again so thank you thank you. thank you everybody and thank you nina bye <laughs> thank you yeah thank you bye bye thank you